Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We are talking about online scams, so many of them floating around. We have with us Ann Ward, CEO of Circle Click Media. She's joining us via Zoom from Austin, Texas, which is great. And all right, I'm going to talk about privacy, privacy issues here in a moment, but cryptocurrency, we did a whole show on that. I barely understand it. I'm not part of it. But I don't know. Tell me, just give me a thumbnail. I don't want to do long period on it, but thumbnail, cryptocurrency, you know, how are people getting scammed with that? Well, you know, Bitcoin and, and all the other types are digital money, right? So there are many, many ways to try and attack someone, whether it's gaining access to their email, uh, if you store your money in what's called a hot wallet, which means it's online, then, you know, there have been attacks of, you know, major um, exchanges. So, you know, crypto.com and uh, others, you know, bigger players have had, you know, issues where, you know, there's, there's scammers that come in and they compromise accounts and information in the accounts. So all they need are the keys and then they're in. And they which can concerns me. I mean, so... Yeah. Why would you do that? It seems like in this age, the security, it's kind of just scary not to have a physical piece of paper or token or something that is, is valuable. It's all out there on the internet and the internet can be compromised. Right, there's also things you can do to secure, you know, um, use cold storage or cold wallet, um, meaning that you store it on a physical device or you print it out on a piece of paper, keep it in a safe in your house. You don't have to store your digital currency online. It's just a lot of people do uh, because it's easier. You can trade it in, change it out. You can, you can do more with it if it is online, but it doesn't have to be online if you don't want it to be. Um, but, you know, some people do a combination uh, so that they, they feel more secure. So you don't really have to do it, but, you know, it can happen at any time, <laughs> you know, whether your money's in a regular bank account or not. So it's not exclusive to crypto. It just sort of seems to get a lot of publicity when <laughs> these major hacks happen, but, but they happen a lot of different ways. Um, you know, s someone, you know, was posing as a support agent. Uh, there was a hackathon going on, which is something developers do, you know, to compete. <laughs> um, you know, they, they work towards, you know, creating something for a prize. And so in the hackathon, someone went into the forums online and said, oh, I'm, I'm, anyone need help? I'm here with support and, you know, offered to help. Well, oh, to help you, I'm going to need, you know, your wallet address. I'm going to need, you know, information. And sure enough, they get access to your account. So, uh. so you know, again, people trusting, not thinking. Like, wait a minute, most most support people won't ask for that information. So that can happen to anyone anytime, but it just seems right now to be happening uh, a little more than uh, people would like in crypto. So, like I said, I've done shows on scams for a while, and it seems like they, people always say they're really bad right now. Where do you think we're going to be in five or ten years? I mean, are we always going to have these problems? Are we ever going to get better at them? Or... I guess the scams just keep evolving and and they keep um, finding ways to, to rip people off. It, it, w w do you think it gets better? Do you think it gets worse? Where, where do you think we'll be in five, 10, you know, 15 years? Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to say, I hope that the tools get better. I think to some degree, you know, we seem to be a step behind, not a step ahead in, in some of these instances. I'm more concerned on a larger scale about ransomware, you know, uh, schools and hospitals being held hostage. I'm more concerned about cyber warfare in, in that respect than I am individual scams because I think um, those are more preventable. Um, you know, taking some steps, putting them in place, you know, setting two-factor authentic authentication up on your, uh, any service you use where you're sh dealing with a lot of information like your bank or your Facebook. Um, you can do privacy audits in most services and they can help you through it. Um, set up those detection alerts. Set, you, you can do a lot of things to protect yourself. And so I think that's less of my concern in the future. More of my concern is what are we gonna be doing about ransomware? 
uh, because that seems to be a very expensive problem <laughs> uh, for cities, for you know major hospitals. And so, I think you know, I'm a I'm an optimist. So I I would say, you know, as 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 good as the scammers are, I think that you know people fighting the good fight are you know more motivated and are going to work harder. Um, and I'd like to say things are going to get better. Tools will tools will continue to come out there. Like there are utilities that can help you generate really strong passwords. For example, um, <laughs> you can use your fingerprint as security. There are things you can do if you're willing to do them and take the extra step and and do that instead of you know uh, leaving yourself vulnerable. All right. What about ransomware? Let's talk about ransomware. So. Um, you gave some examples. What are we seeing? When, when did this start, the ransomware situation? Um, and first, I guess, describe what it is and, and kind of where we are with it. So ransomware is a very large, malicious level of attack that basically a hacker comes and says, uh, I'm shutting you down until you pay this ransom, and then I will release you and you know your system that I'm holding hostage. This has happened to cities, towns. This has happened to school systems, at hospitals, uh, people with large networks that are dependent to operate. And so the idea being that they come in and they um, literally ransom, like it's like a kidnapping, but of your of your electronic assets. And so, you know, the thing is they. They may get away with it for a little bit, but they often get traced. Um, you know, it, it can be figured out after the fact with you know forensic cyber people. Like there, there are tools. I always believe that there's you know there's a trace to anything that happens online, but it, it has become more and more of a headline. I, I would say I first learned about it probably four or five years ago. Um, I have no idea how long it's actually been happening, but it's been on my radar about that long because it just sort of blew my mind that anybody could get control of things like that. <laughs> that, is, that blows my mind too. And where does it come from? Um, you know, anywhere really. The, these these people are very savvy, and so they tend to do that from you know uh, corners of the internet all over the world you know, their parents' basements, who, who really knows? <laughs> and sometimes they're doing it in teams, right? And so they're communicating on who knows what channel, you know, maybe using anonymous programs. And um, there are ways to cloak yourself. So, you And know, how do they get in? How do they get in? Let's say it's a hospital. How, do, how does that happen? Um, so I imagine they would run a utility trying to find a vulnerability um, they would write a script that would go in and, and, you know, scan for passwords maybe and figure out a way in there um, to basically on a, you know, they're, they're all developers, right? So they, they would, you know, use either a utility or they themselves write a script to go in and attack. And, you know, then it's just sort of once they're in, they're in and they can do whatever they want because they take control of it. So they essentially are, are like a puppeteer. All they need then is to get in like one employee's account. Is that what you're saying? Once they're in, they're in? Um, it would need to be an administrative level account. It would okay. need, you know, an end, an end user probably wouldn't do the job. I mean, we're talking like high level of access to control because the permissions, you know, uh, it, it definitely is not as, as simple as one bad password. Um, but it, it's it's definitely a sophisticated thing to do, and then to contact and you know make demands like that's that's <laughs> that's pretty scary stuff. What are some of the ones that have most stood out to you that have happened? Um, I cannot remember offhand the name of the city that it happened to, but there was a whole like town in the Midwest. Like the city wow. was shut down. The city services shut down, uh, which affected a number of operations from transportation, to education. I mean, this was like a massive, massive scale. Um, that's something that you read in a book or see in a movie, 
it didn't really seem like real life to me. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I agree. That does seem like that. But that's happening now more and more. Is that right? I mean, do you think we're on, are we on the front edge of that? Or is that something that's kind of growing? Um, I would like to say it's not growing, but I think that it's something that uh, our government is allocating more and more resources to it year over year. There are more and more task forces and, and you know, governmental agencies working on it because it is becoming more common. Um, you know, it's it's really unfortunate. It, it's it's a very sad, sad thing because you have to wonder if, if these people put their talents to use, you know, couldn't they couldn't they do something better with those talents that's less uh, criminal? But um you know, because these are sophisticated operators. These are people who really know how how the internet works. And so, you know, I wish that they would, you know, build a new Facebook or something. You know? like, do <laughs> yeah, something we need a new productive. Facebook. Yeah, let's have them build yeah, a new build, Facebook. Yeah, we'll just stop we'll ripping us off. Work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the unfortunate thing is that that is um, business is good. Yeah. So there's there's not much incentive to stop. All right, we are going to take a break. Then I want to come back, talk about privacy issues um, and, and other things. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.